If I don't like you, that obviously means that I'm going to take a bad decision. So why don't I take my decision based on totally what I perceive you to be, what my instincts tell me about you, irrespective of my sentiments or feelings about you. So that is what transpired here to a point where I came to terms with it. I had a soliloquy with myself and sat down and told myself, you are lying to yourself. I'm telling you the greatest lie you tell to anybody is a lie to self. And I told myself, you know this person has been robbing you blind. You love this person. You will take a bullet for this person. But this person has been totally adverse to your cause. It is time to let this person go. As soon as I took that decision, settled them as I thought somebody that has been with me, served my cause for years ago, and I let him go. It was like a big wave went off my shoulder, brought in a different set of people to man his position because he got his whole team also involved in his scams and his schemes. Things changed differently. I'm telling you, the few, it just took a few weeks, things changed for the better. So yes, Betrayal is part of it. How to react to it is also part of it. Okay. Uh, I think I, I have to say this. Um, yeah, so let me take the ladies over first. Okay, what's the next step? So we have to take two questions at the time. And um, someone online said, um, for ideas, we, uh, we are actually very intentional with the speakers that we bring being politics, entertainment, business. So, since you're an actor, someone's asking, what advice would you give to a young person wanting to go into acting at this time? And how would you advise them to go about it? We spoke about what the gentleman that asked a question earlier about the kind of decision you're taking. Don't be, well, let's be specific to our, our answers now. Let's tell me. Don't be an actor because you think it's a glamorous job. Because you're going to be so woefully disappointed when you come in. There's nothing glamorous about it. When you sit up 2, 3 a.m. in the morning filming, or you're made to repeat a certain part 20 times over, or somebody says something totally sadistic about your mind because they don't know you enough, then every part of your life is open in the court of public opinion to be judged, to become your judge and jury, then maybe you have everything. It's also another reason to be totally vested in it to understand that this is really what I want to do. So yes, it's okay to say you want to be one. How to go about it is to convince yourself first. After I get down on my knees and I ask my maker why to find my part because every day you discover new things about you. When I leave this room and I step out, I'm going to discover something that I picked up from here. There's something new. I've changed. I'm in motion. I've transited. I'm not the same person that stood here. So when you are done having that understanding with your maker and God is first, the second is the absolute belief in you. Nobody else. There's no mistakes about it when I walk into a room. Whether I was 10 years old or even now, it doesn't matter. I don't let you see any other person but who I really am. In that order, I ask that you trust and believe in yourself above anything else below God. After God, it's not your parents, it's not your friends, not the mentors, not the person with the opportunities that were really that will open the doors for you. It is you. If you believe in yourself enough, there's no door you cannot open. No door. And I believe you. I stood once in front of uh, an area of uh, elite producers and stars and social media, or just everybody that made up the, entire, the entirety of the power structure of our industry. And I wanted to say something. And, you know, they, they kept saying, oh, let another person. I was a young actor. And I said something that a lot of people still consider abominable to this day, and I'm about to say it again. And I asked them, can they, because every one of them got up and said, oh, I made that person. Every star of consequence came under somebody. Oh, I gave this person the first chance. I did this for that person. Without me, you won't do this thing. So it was, we're having 
a battle between the actors and producers at that time. Apparently, we got banned because they said I engineered and orchestrated a group that was asking for too much money. Isn't that ridiculous? So apparently, our producers were becoming multi-millionaires, and the actors, not me, I mean, guys that were slightly low, were struggling. And so I called the group and I said, we need to change the structure. Without us, they don't exist. We are the ones the fans know. We're the ones with the gift and the talent. Why, why would they be earning more than us? Why, why, why is there no balancing skill, some sort of skill, where at least something could be measured, parameter by which they would say at least we're doing well? Why is the gap so distant? Why is there a total disconnect in the wealth with the, with the wealth appraisal between us and them? So I said everybody should start asking for more money. So they got together and banned me for two years. And when they banned us for two years, they brought a new crop of actors to take our place. Check the history. Totally relatable story you can find in our archives. So these new guys they brought could not make the bill. They weren't making enough money. The fans totally rejected them. They could not make the one million sales, two million sales that we were snapping out of our repertoire and our movies. So they came back to bring us back. Isn't God wonderful? Yeah. They brought us back. On the negotiating table, everybody had something to say. I made you, I made you, without me, you wouldn't have been that. I give you your first chance. My colleagues kept quiet because everybody had a lean, had somebody to point out to say, without you, I wouldn't have been whatever it is I became. So I said one thing and I said, can somebody in this room stand up and truthfully claim that without them, that I wouldn't have come up? Not one person. Not one person. Because I knew how I started it. I knew the belief that I had. The belief base that I had, it was totally, I just fixated on God, refused to do small roles. For the first two, three years of my career, I couldn't do a major role because they kept giving me small roles and I refused them. I said if it's not a major a lead, I'm not doing it. So three years for a guy that just left home, it's a long time to be broke. Trust me, at some point you will bend. You will compromise. You will take the little pigeons. But my self value was way too high. It wasn't about money, it wasn't about anything. I just knew that this is the standard I set, and I was going, I wasn't going to relent it, not for anybody, not even for myself. So no matter what I was going through, it's just a question of time. It has to be understood in this room that whatever you're going through is just a question of time. The overriding factor is your total belief in yourself. And so my day came one day, some of the most established stars had gone for an event in London called Afro Hollywood. And so there was a space, a vacancy of top mill stars for film. They went there, stayed longer than the plan, stayed over the month. So they said, okay, there was a vacancy. How are we going to fill it? We need to make movies. These guys are not coming back. But there were female leads. So they said, okay, you know what? Where's that guy, that, that funny boy with a funny accent that's always rejected in small rooms? Yeah, go bring him, let me do with him for a few days before the big boys come back. So they brought little me. Dump me there, pay me peanuts. Trust me, you don't want to know how much these guys will pay me. I received as much as 15 to 20,000 naira for leads in dollars. Let me explain it. It's less than $30, $40. Only the $50 hours. So they brought me back. I did four films, being paid peanuts. Every time I was paid peanuts, something was wrong with the wardrobe. I was spend out of that little money because I had to look right. That's one thing, when the opportunity meets, okay, your preparation. I was always prepared. It was almost like I lived all my life waiting for this chance. And when it came, we wrote four films. I spent 80% of what I was paid looking right for the film. So all my earlier films you saw, that was me buying the wardrobe out of my pocket. 
I finished those four. The big boys came back. They kicked me out again and stuck with the big names. But lo and behold, all four films came out all over one million sales. So they had no choice. They came back for me to say, okay, you know what, you can come back and we'll see that you really deserve a place here. And I charged them one million per script after that. It was that simple. Your chance will come if you understand. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. My name is Karen. Yes, ma'am. You spoke about people in your earlier presentations. And you I spoke, spoke about people, I'm so sorry. People, types of people we meet in life. And then you spoke about the people that live for ideas, then you advise that we try to be with those people because who are like-minded people who always want to get ideas to make change. I'm asking, with somebody in a community or born in a society where they don't have people who have those ideas to reach to that pain, to reach to that angle, there are places where there are no competition with anybody, what advice do you give to that person? You provide. How? We all improvise. Um, what did I have to create mine? I will explain it. When we started, I had two friends. You see these two guys, these are the friends you need all your life. You need people that believe in you. You need people that believe in you. I repeat it. You need people that believe in you. Look at the eyes of the friends, the people you have right now. Do they believe in you? Okay? That is the whole point. You see these two guys? They believed in me. We understood something. My talent, gift, without hard work, is nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if you don't go to elevate your talent, your gifts, it is nothing. I met these guys in school. We came together, we finished serving. And they, well, they couldn't get a job the first one, two years. So I called them and said, you know what? You be my manager. Imagine me asking a guy to be my manager and I hadn't earned a dime in my career. It took self-belief. I said, you become my PA. So together, every day, we'll concoct ideas. We lived on our dreams. Our dreams thrived on ideas. That was all we had. We didn't have money, we didn't have connections, we didn't have nothing. As a matter of fact, we were even rejected in our ranks. We were deemed too arrogant, too aloofish, you know? We were deemed like we had security conflict, but we understood the assignment. The assignment was the fact that we believed in each other. So what we did was that we push our mantle together and we believe that every time they say, okay, you know what, let me approach these people, let me talk to this producer. They kept creating chances. They kept pushing, we kept putting together. But our understanding was that we will not accept small roles. We will make, we will convert relationships with young producers that saw the light in us, saw the next generation in us, saw the next stars in us. And that's how we kept pushing it. We pushed to a point where people started seeing us. You have to believe. Believe is everything. Your dream is everything. And the conviction of that is what carries you through. Not everybody is born with a silver spoon. Not everybody is born with a big last name. But a lot of people have made it. The whole status quo of um, old rich or old money has been totally demystified right now. Millennials are making it everywhere. People are sitting in the confines of their garage at home and becoming millionaires. What makes you think that you really need people to make it, that you need to have a certain caliber of people to make it in this life? It's a fallacy. It's been demystified a long time ago. This generation has even made a rubbish of it even more. The new color of rich, named the first 20 richest men, they were all self-made. So, directly to your question, my dear, please, don't look at your background. Don't look at your last name. Don't look at what's happening around you. As I exist, I'll tell you how I do it. I am deaf, blind, mute to what every other person is doing around me. I don't care. 
my agenda is my purpose. It is the people around me. Those are the people I carry my thing. I don't care if somebody is buying a Rolls Royce next to me. I don't care if somebody has $200 million next to me. It doesn't matter. It's never mattered to me. The point is that am I putting in my best every day? Do I wake up every day imbued with my dreams and my aspirations? Am I walking out to that goal? Am I being a great father, uncle, brother, friend to people around me? Am I serving humanity in a certain course with my gifts? These are questions you ask yourself. It's not about you know, latching on to some ready-made background before you make it in life. No, my dear, it doesn't work that way anymore. Have ideas. Make sure the ideas are authentic and they will serve humanity in some cause. Or at least at the very least solve the problem. Believe in me. Chase it. Pray about it every day. Give it up to God. He's the maker of all things. At the end of the day, surround yourself with people that really believe in you. I keep hammering on it because I know that I won't have been nothing without those two guys. We dream together. We start together. We push our agenda together. We become successful together. Then they fare off to handle other things. We own four businesses together. We remain steady for friends together because we've been through the highs and the lows. Who are the people around you? Who are the people that are telling you in your ear that you can't become, become on earth because you don't have the right last name or don't belong to the right family? I think it's a lie. The truth is really simple. All right. You just reduce your wages. Yes, sir. Can you start During the course of the pandemic, um, my son and I, we found ourselves in Paris. We wanted to go to Disney. I was a spoiling 13 part and I thought, hey, man, let's hang out. We got to Paris. The whole world shut down. It was in the middle of the pandemic. And everything shut down, literally. We ended up spending um, six months in Paris without going home. Um, so in, the, in that time, you know children, they're resilient, they are easy to, I mean, they're social butterflies. It was getting on well, making friends up and down, and the adults that was forced to stay in one space, and I was struggling with depression, as we all were at that time. And at that time, I decided everything I've experienced in my life brought me to this point. I've become totally fearless in everything I do. This is the first time in a long time in my life I was expressing fear, feeling fear for him, for me, for the world. So I didn't know what to do. So in the middle of that, I needed to take that emotion, translate it, and put it somewhere. And that's what birthed this book, The Gift of the Arts. How to find your gift in every odd part of your life. I wrote 15 series of this book. A subtitle to each one, this is Walking Through Walls. We wrote about different area of subjects under the sun, how to deal with grief, how to deal with love, how to do startups. Yeah, I mean, you can find it on the different platforms from Amazon. It's an ebook series. I think it's really something everybody needs to read, to understand your purpose, to understand how to deal with it, understand how to circumvent circumstances in your life. As a black man, we have very unique problems, especially if you traverse the world, you understand. You dress the wrong way, end up in first class, you'll be misjudged. You end up in the different class of El Cerro, you'll be misjudged. We will profile at every turn and everywhere you go. So you need to understand how to deal with different aspects of life. And I think that is what I wrote about. So, yeah, um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, um, we have it on Amazon Kindle. We have it on, um, on Apple Books, on Kobo. All the e-books through platforms you have them. We okay, you can also get the hard copy from there. We release a new series every two months. This is the first. All right. Let's clap our hands. Let's, let's get I think I'm in trouble now. Right? Well, literally. <laughs> you, you promised me the presence of Pastor H2. Yeah. So, I said you're a hard man to say no to. Okay, but I need a favor. I hear you, sir. I want to give you a script right now mm. for you to act it. <laughs> so, this is the script. Uh, Let's say, okay, what's going to come? 
Rosalind, it's your wife. And you cheated on her. And she caught you. And you were apologizing. Whilst you were apologizing, your side chain came. Acted. <laughs> Side chick come at you. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me, we have to have a complete picture now. So she's my wife. Nancy, come here. Nancy, we need a side chick. Nancy. God forbid you will never be a side chick. Come <laughs> here, the side chick temporarily. Let me help you. Okay. It will never happen, but you make a really good side chick. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? Nice to meet you, man. Nice. What's your name? Rusty. All right. Action money, guys. Yeah, but action money. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we need a wife to, we need a mic for the wife as well. You know, you know, this is putting you on the spot. I get paid well for this thing, but yes, it's my getting it for free. Hello. Okay, so Rosalie, you have. You have caught him cheating. So I just. <laughs> so I'm uh, obviously with the side chick. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're walking into some establishment, okay, hotel, and you call me. Funny enough, I just finished the film with the exact same scenario four days ago. Let's go. Yeah, exact. On the road. We told niggas outside and playing that part. So I mean, this is what I. Action! What are you doing here with that? Um, um, what, what, what is my wife? What are you No, 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 baby. That's my new secretary, actually. Uh, no, 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 baby, talk. I'm just I'm talk. You're my new secretary. I was interviewing her. Where? And so, what did you say? So we wanted to go have dinner in that. There's no space in your office to interview her. No, no, it's it that. I, want, I wanted to see her on her camera. No, Nancy, you can't go now. Nancy, wait. Wait, wait this, this is my wife. Nancy, you want to make my wife? Okay, okay. Okay, this is my wife, Nancy. Please be, be, be polite to madam. Say good afternoon. Hello, madam. Nancy, greet, greet my madam very well. You get a job. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay. See that? So she's going to be there, but she's going to be there. Really? Clap your hands, give me a for Jim Ryan! All right. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Please take your seat. We have our last speaker.